So about 10 years ago, I used to run a live blues night here in Santa Barbara called Katz's Blues Night. And I used to have this guy and his band down. It was a nine piece band called Prior Baird and the Deacons. And they used to come down and drink us out of Budweiser and just tear the roof off the place. It was one of the most fun nights I've ever had when I used to run bars. And uh, so we stayed friends. And last year, I was surprised to see Pryor Baird on The Voice. And he did very well. I think he placed in the top five, maybe second place. But he is a phenomenal musician. So when he reached out to me to build this desk, I usually don't take commissions. But uh, this was one that was too hard to pass up. Um, this is one of my favorite builds of all time. And it was really cool because Pryor came down about halfway through the build to check it out and did a concert here in the International Maker Station. So at the end of the video, you're actually going to get to see some uh, one of the songs from his new album. And throughout the video, you'll hear some of his music. This desk is so cool. It's got bird's eye maple butterfly keys. It has this really cool cast iron base that I built out of parts from cast iron pipe. Uh, it's got a drawer that's scribed to the live edge slab. It has wireless charging. His logo is in it. You just put your phone right on the logo and it does the wireless charging. Throughout the build, we also did videos on sort of the larger aspects of this and, and what the I felt sort of the important areas to really dive into were. So I did a video on how to flatten a slab, which will be linked below. I did a video on how to make a drawer box for the Blue Motion soft close drawer slides and then here you'll see in this build video, we go over sort of the whole process of putting it together. All the tools that I use will be linked below as well as in the pinned comment, as well as links to the videos that where we dive deeper into these subjects, including one that Sean Boyd did about the Blue Motion soft close drawer slides. So let's get right into this build, guys. This is one of my favorite projects I've ever done by, by far. I mean, this was so fun and it came out so gorgeous. I'm really excited. And it was really just special to have Pryor come down to the International Maker Station and give Mark and I a concert. It was just a blast. So I uh, check out the video, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Okay, so what you saw me using is called a draw knife. This is great for removing the bulk of the bark and then what you want to do is you got to make sure you remove all of it because what will happen is later on it'll dry and fall off and the only way to not have that is to epoxy it in but you want to make sure you remove all of the bark down to the sapwood and you can see here the reason I'm using the sander and you can also use a wire wheel those work pretty good on like a grinder but I'm just using 60 grit and the edge of my random orbital as you can see you get like these little teeny patches that you need to get rid of. Um, before you can put finish on that. But when you get down to the sapwood, you're good to go. And you know, don't worry about altering the live edge too much because you have a half inch of sapwood and it's always gonna look like a live edge because you're in that random pattern anyways. So I'm gonna keep taking this off using a combination of my draw knife and my sander. Um, but you'll see uh, my goal is to get down to this white wood here. Okay, so here's my wireless charger and there is his logo. And I think it would be nice to have his logo be the same size as the wireless charger. That way you know exactly where to put your phone. So this is about three and, eh, let's call it three and five eighths tall. So that's how tall we're gonna make his logo here in V-Carve. Usually I would use Fusion for everything but engraving. V-Carve, when it comes to engraving, is really just the S-H-I-T. So we're gonna head over to the CNC and go ahead and put this in the slab. Now we're gonna put in Pryor's logo into here. Uh, I'm using this really cool bit for, that I got from Bits Bits. It has this really cool coating that they put on there which really increases longevity. And uh, I really like these bits because my engraving bits before used to break all the time. These are great, they don't break, they 
can go pretty deep for a, this is a 1 32nd, 3.5 degree ball carving bit. Um, I'll leave a link to this in the description, but it's a great bit. Bits Bits makes great stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and set his logo basically 90 degrees to the middle of the tree, I guess. I, you know, there's no real way to identify where something should go. You just kind of go by feeling. I feel pretty good about where this is set up. So uh, I'm gonna put it about right here because that's where you're gonna put your phone. And actually, I think it would be really cool if the center is right on that crack because we're already gonna fill it with a epoxy. So I think it would be a neat place for it. So I'm going to go ahead and zero it out there. And I'm going the wrong way on both of these. There we go. Okay, so that came out really cool. I did a cross hatching pattern in V-Carve, which uh, really just made it look amazing. I think if I would have carved out that whole thing, it just would have sort of looked like an indent, especially after some sanding and things like that. So I think that was a really cool way to do it. We're gonna tape the underside here. We're gonna get all these cracks filled with epoxy. Um, you saw I trimmed off this edge flush just so that I could get a straight tape line here so that nothing would drip out the sides. Uh, we'll go ahead and bevel that later. Let's get this taped up and get some epoxy on here. Okay, so we've got this wireless charger. We've done a ton of testing. Uh, this is the template I came up with. It's basically a four inch hole with a channel for the plug. And then I'm gonna face that kind of towards where the legs are gonna be later. I'm not gonna cut the channel to the leg because of the industrial pipe legs we're gonna be using. I can actually run this cord in the leg. So I wanna find out where my legs are gonna be at the end before I route that channel. Uh, in our testing, we found that three millimeters, which is about 0.11 inches, is plenty of room to get wireless charging through a phone case. And our logo is 0.045 deep. So, sorry, that's a lot of numbers I've listed here. So, 0.118 is the distance that we're going to set our charger at so that we can still charge through a case. We've tested this with both iPhone and Android. I'll link this wireless charger. It's actually the cheaper of the two I bought, but by far has superior distance on charging. So I'll link this one, I would highly recommend it. It was like 12 bucks and you can charge. We, I think we got it up to about 3.7 millimeters uh, before it would stop charging. So now we need to locate this, which is not an easy task. So here's what I've come up with, is I'm gonna use this angle finder I have and set it to the angle of the letter uh, and do half the distance. And then I'm just gonna slide it along and see where it goes. And it seems like it has more of a slope than a run here. So I'm gonna go to the middle of the logo with the ruler. I'm gonna set that and I'm going to just mark that place on the slab, just like this. And then I'm gonna mark the other side of the logo and then the other side. And well, then what I'm going to do, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using the straight part of my square here along that straight line that I created with my angle finder here. And then I'm just 
going to make a mark down here that is about even with that. And now that we flipped our slab over, we're gonna also flip our angle gauge over and I'm gonna line it up with those lines. And we know that this distance is right to the middle of the logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line. And just do that. And then same thing over here. And I know that it's right because that crack runs just about through the middle of the logo. So we're like dead on. So I'm gonna go over here. So there we go. So I'm gonna put the center of my template right here and then I'm gonna face it towards where the back of the desk will be. Kind of, I know there's gonna be a leg roughly in this area. So I'm gonna face this opening right here. What I've done with my template is I'm gonna be using a guide bushing in my router. And I like these because I can use any bit. And that allows me to use this super hog bit from Whiteside that I got from a company called Bits Bits that puts this coating on it and makes them last longer. I just found this company and they were really, I know they're getting a lot of mentions in this video, but I really like them. Uh, they just sent me a bunch of router bits and the bits are top notch. They take Whiteside bits and add this coating to them. They're amazing. You can also use a bit with a top bearing on it. These work great as well, but if you're gonna use a template bushing like I have here. They also, I mentioned these in my skills for router videos. They also look like this. These are the ones for my Bosch Colt. If you're gonna use that, make sure you take half the outside diameter of your bushing and half the diameter of your bit, subtract them and add that number to your template. For me, it was an eighth because I have a three quarter inch bushing and a half inch bit. So I take that quarter inch divided by two, you get an eighth. And I added that to my template when I made it. So uh, for setting the depth, we're gonna use this test piece. We're gonna set it on the same surface as the slab and drop our bit down to it. Uh, and that's gonna ensure that we just go to that three millimeters left that we want. And this is actually, you know, this is crucial. So don't be afraid to go slow. Probably gonna take an eighth inch at a time checking to make sure that I'm not anywhere near going through until I get to that final pass and I'll just, that final pass will be a very small amount. So uh, let's get cutting. Okay, so we've got this routed out. Good news is we did not go through the slab, which is a big win. So I'm gonna put a little piece of tape here. Actually, I'll probably put it on the outsides of it. We're gonna stick it in here and do a little testing. Okay, so after routing this hole, it works really, really well. I was a little concerned about the thickness of the material. And so I wanted to make sure that it was supported as we finish up this slab here. So what I did was I took a little bit of 15 minute epoxy, I put the charger in and just put a little bit around the edges. So if I need to, I can come back later with a razor blade and cut it out. But this way, the slab from the top is supported. It was, you know, we got it down to about three millimeters so that we could charge our phone. Um, but that just made me nervous because with the logo and the epoxy, it just felt like it was flexing a lot. So uh, I epoxied the thing in, but just barely. And then I'm going to come back at the end and we'll put a cap over this and put it in with maybe like a, a finished nail or something, something that I can get out later uh, if I ever want to remove this. Our last step before we can start finishing this slab is to put in a couple butterfly keys. There's a pretty significant crack here that I want to reinforce. And then there's one on the underside, just to the left of the logo that I want to reinforce. We're going to reinforce it from the top uh, and not the bottom because I want these to be seen. I have this really cool piece of bird's eye maple that really, you know, maple contrasts with walnut really well. So I'm going to draw some butterfly keys. I did a great video. In fact, I'll put a picture of it. I did a abalone butterfly key. I'll put it right here. Um, I'll link that video as well in the cards and down below. When I do butterfly keys, I don't like them to look like perfect hourglasses. So what I do is I sort of give them a little bit of an angle that is kind of non-conforming. And so I'll use my ruler and do that. You do pretty much want straight lines unless you have small chisels and you can make a rounded corner. But I like to draw them without kind of making them equal. And I think that looks a little bit cooler and a little bit more hand done. So we're gonna montage through this baby. If you wanna see how I do it in length, go check out that abalone butterfly key video, but let's get these put in.
Okay, we've got our butterfly keys in, our epoxy done. We, we are ready to finish this slab up. Now, when I am finishing a slab, I don't like to always make straight lines. Like for here, if you look at the slab, that just doesn't make sense. And so I'm gonna actually try and keep a live edge slab look around this corner. So I'm gonna use a jigsaw and sort of randomly go at the same sort of angle that the slab goes at and cut that off. And then the far end, I'm gonna do a straight bevel. And then here, I'll probably also do a straight bevel. But when you're working with live edge slabs, you wanna really think about the feel of the piece and the design of the piece. And you don't wanna just start cutting stuff off in straight lines if it doesn't make sense. And this is one of those cases where it doesn't. So let's clean up the rest of this slab and get it ready for finish so we can start working on the base and the drawer. got the slab prepped and ready for finish, which is super exciting. Slab's ready! God damn it, Pryor. <laughs> Actually, guys, we uh, have Pryor Baird in the shop today. Uh, <laughs> welcome, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's been a long time. Uh, so this is a desk I'm building for Pryor. Pryor is on tour right now. He has a new album out. We do indeed. Yes, What's sir. the album called? It is just self-titled Pryor Baird. It's new awesome. EP. Anywhere you get your music. Go awesome. I've listened to it. It's really, really good. So thanks for coming down, man. And uh, after this video, uh, there'll be a little song that Pryor does, which will be really cool. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned towards the end. Uh, so let's get some finish on this. Well, now, hey, Mr. Bartender, please don't be so slow. I got time for one more round and I'm six pack. So we've got some finish. The first coat of finish was shellac that we're gonna put on this. We're gonna finish it with lacquer, but I wanted to put kind of a sanding sealer and, and get one coat on it just to sort of protect it as we finish this thing up. Uh, it's now time to put in the drawer and <laughs> this is gonna be really cool. What we're gonna do, I'm using Blue Motion soft close drawer slides, which, you know, in my opinion, are the best out there. And they're not that expensive. I think you can get them for about 30 bucks. I'll link them in the, the description. I get them from Rockler because Amazon doesn't have the hardware. Is that right, Sean? Yeah, they kind of do like you have to buy them in pieces. Rockler has a really nice kind of kit set up, which is, which is nice. I released a video a couple days ago about how to build a box for the Blue Motion slides. And Sean did a video, uh, we released them on the same day about how to dial these in. It was like a deep dive, right, Sean? Yeah, I kind of just talk about all the intricacies and um, just doing everything you need to do to get them really dialed and, and working nicely. That's awesome. Um, all right, so we're gonna get the drawer installed and we're gonna get this eight quarter piece of, probably not this one, this one's kind of ugly. And we're gonna put it on the front of the drawer and scribe it to the desk so it follows the contour. I think it's gonna look really, really cool. Uh, so Sean and I are gonna breeze through putting in this drawer, but if you wanna see how to do this in extreme detail, Sean and I both have a video on how to do different aspects of this. Uh, so those will be linked down below. Uh, so we'll check in with you in a little bit. Okay, so now that the drawer is done, and make sure to go check out those videos to really get into the nitty gritty on how we did that. We're gonna take this piece of walnut here and double stick tape it to our drawer face. We're then going to trim it to size and trace the slab. And then we're gonna use the bandsaw, some rafts, and some sandpaper to make sure that it sort of is scribed to the slab and matches perfectly. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach it. So let's get started.
man, that drawer really came out cool. And that only took like 20 minutes. I was actually surprised how fast that went, and I love that thing. So now it's time to put together the base and get some finish on this thing. I'm using this cast iron black pipe, uh, which you can find at any big box store or plumbing supply store. It's really cool. You just clean it off with some acetone. It looks really gross when you get it. As you can see, you know, it's super, super black. But then once you clean all this crud off of it, it has this really, really neat cast iron look to it and really industrial. And I'm really excited. I actually already put it together in the store and it is neat looking. So uh, we're gonna get these cleaned off and put together and, and get this thing finished today, I think. Guys, this looks really cool, and I got my Johnny Brook squat going on. Uh, it, the black stuff came off really easy with acetone. It was a little rough on my hands, but uh, it, it was what it was. Um, to protect this, I'm gonna put boiled linseed oil on it. That's gonna keep this from rusting, and it's gonna make sure that it kind of stays looking the way it does and patinas naturally over time. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some lacquer on the top and get this thing wrapped up. I'm really excited to see this thing finished. Well, are we there yet, Daddy? How much longer is it gonna be? Well, are we there yet, Daddy? How long is it gonna be? Put his hand on my knee and say, son. Well now, can you take me fishing, Daddy? How long till we get a bite? Oh, can you take me fishing, Daddy? How long till we get a bite? Can save you, you better run. Thank you so much for watching. It really it just came out gorgeous, Pryor. Absolutely. I'm so happy. And uh, guys, Pryor's gonna play a song off his new album. So go ahead, yeah, bud. It's called Boys Like Us. If it's broke, we can fix it with a six pack and some wrenches. Our arms are tan and sometimes our hands are covered in oil and dirt. All week long, we busted. Friday afternoon, we truck it. This little 